Welcome everyone, this is Techzilla. I'm back again with another video. And today I'm going to talk about the new iPhones and the new products Apple announced a few days ago. I didn't want to follow the herd and do a video straight after the launch. I wanted to let the hype die down and then do my video of my thoughts. Now it's going to sound like a rant. It's not a rant. Okay, it's not a rant. First off, let me start off by saying I am not an Apple fan, okay? Not an Apple fan. I have got Apple products, but that's because I'm a YouTuber and I need to review them, so I have to buy them in order to do so. What do I think about the Apple products? Well, we'll come to that in a minute, okay? First thing, Apple hasn't cut me no checks. I don't sponsor my video. They don't even know who the hell I am. So let's be straight with that before people start going nuts at me and calling me whatever under the sun. I wanna make this video and try and be as fair as possible, unbiased, and I'm gonna explain my reasoning behind it. Okay, first thing that's really irritating me on YouTube at the moment. There's so many YouTubers feeding the public a load of BS, okay? I'll t let me explain where I'm coming from. A lot of them are going, the phone's too expensive. This is the first time I'm not gonna be buying an iPhone. I bought every iPhone since Apple started up the company, blah, blah, blah. And the reasons they're giving is, number one, the price is too much. Number two, it's too similar to last year's models. Okay, okay, fair enough. My issue with that is, if that's your reasoning, why have you bought all the other iPhones that ever got released? They were all overpriced, according to people, a lot of people, at, in those specific years, they were overpriced. And since when did Apple do major updates on their design for the 10 years? The first major change was last year when they released the iPhone 10. Previous iPhones before that were very, very similar. Look at the six, look at the sevens, look at the eights. And by their own admission, they bought every iPhone before to this year's launch. So if they bought all those and they didn't think they were too similar in order not to buy them, then why are they not buying this? Doesn't make sense. Second of all, <clears throat> the price. Okay, people are focused on the 1500 pounds or dollars of the half a terabyte iPhone 10s Max. Yes, that is bloody steep. Very, very expensive. I get it, I know. A lot of people cannot afford that. And even if they can, they go, no, I'm not spending that much on a mobile device. I get it, that's fair enough. But what I can't stand is when someone's telling other people, don't buy the device, don't buy it. Just because you think it's too expensive doesn't mean your consumers, your public think it's too expensive. You know, these are the same people saying the Note 9 was too expensive. Does the Note 9 look too expensive to you now for 512 gigs? You know, let's get, let's be fair on this and let's be unbiased. Let's talk about it real talk, real talk. It, 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 I am a Samsung fan, no doubt. I love my Samsung devices. I like my Huawei devices too. I'm a fan of their devices more than I am of iPhones. So this is why, you know, I'm trying to give, be fair about all of this. Um, <clears throat> also, a lot of consumers, they don't care. They don't care, right, about the price necessarily because they're gonna buy the device through a carrier or a network and it's gonna be subsidized for two years. That's how most people buy their phones in the UK, in Europe, in America, in Australia. That's how it's done. So they're not too worried about the pricing. Let's just, let's, that's the real, that's realistic. That's me being honest. That's how I see it. The average consumer does not care about a 2K screen. They don't care about all these other things people are nitpicking about. They don't need, they won't even know the difference. Believe me, the average consumer don't know the difference. Now in London, in London, I see so many people using iPhones, and I'm talking iPhones that are way old, really old. Broken screens, they don't put cases on them, they don't put screen protectors on them. They're broken, they're smashed. I've seen people using iPhone 4s, 5s, 6s, 7s, 8s, a whole plethora of them. 
The average consumer who buys an iPhone intends to keep that iPhone until the thing stops working and can no longer function and can no longer be repaired or it's not worth repairing. That is how most average consumers are when they buy an iPhone. So let me ask you this, Apple still support iPhones, in some cases, for, which are six years old, they're still giving them the latest updates, which have a, which tend to improve the overall experience. Some people say this made it worse or whatever. Okay, that's another story, it's a different matter. So £1,500 spread over six years is what? What does that equate to? So that's 200 about what, £300? It's not that that bad when you think about it. Now take an average, say, let's take an Android device that costs £900, which will only get software updates for two years in general, okay? Now let's say it's £800, let's be fair. And it's only gonna be spoiled by soft, software updates for two years, which is generally the average in the world of Android. £800 split over two years, £400 a year. So you now got to go out and buy yourself another phone if you want the latest software, latest security patches, etc. So you buy another Android phone, another flagship, say £800. After two years, guess what? No more software updates, you're going to get another Android phone. So in six years, you'll have bought three Android devices costing £800 a piece, costing £400 per year. Think about it, just think about that for a little bit, a little while. I don't know how it is in the States or in anywhere else in the world, I'm just representing UK here. In UK, people buy their iPhones to keep them for a long time, a long time. So to me, I'm not gonna rant about the price. I expected the price to be high. I don't know why everyone seems to be so shocked about it. Wow, it's so expensive, it's so expensive. Come on, it's Apple, they're always too expensive. It, it's the nature of Apple. Why do you think they're the most valuable company in the world? Come on, use your brains, think about it. <coughs> Another thing, people buy iPhones for the ecosystem, okay? I'm not gonna get into the ins and outs of that, but that's another reason. I'm not trying to defend Apple, I'm not trying to defend people who buy Apple products. Like I said, I'm Samsung, Huawei, that's what I like, especially Samsung. So, be fair, let people spend their money on whatever they want to spend it on. It's no one else's business but their business. Don't put your hands in their pockets. Let them buy what they want. Don't tell people, don't buy this, don't buy that. Just because you don't like it, they might. Leave it. Now, if you've got an iPhone 10 from last year, which I have, should you get the iPhone 10s? Absolutely not. No chance. Hell no, do not do it. It's literally such a minor amount of upgrades. It's not worth it, believe me. I've got an iPhone 10. I'm not getting the 10S. But, but, I have put in a pre-order for the 10S Max because I want that bigger screen. Now I'm buying a 10S Max because I don't get sent review units, I don't get loaners, I don't get discount, I don't get nothing. Like you watching me, I pay full price. So I want to be fair and I want to represent what you guys are going to be paying. And I can be unbiased because I'm not signed or tied down to any contracts or verbal agreements or whatever. So I have ordered the 10X, oh, 10S Max. I'm, going to, I'm just going to call it the Max, it's easier. Call it the Max. I've got the 256 gig gold version because I want to review it. I have got a channel. That's why I buy these devices to give you guys feedback and my impressions of it. And unlike a lot of people, I keep my devices for a long time. Like, I've, like I said, I've got the iPhone 10 over there. I'll probably bring in and compare it and do whatever. Whatever, you know, I don't wanna get into it too much right now. So definitely if you've got a 10, don't bother with the 10S. If you really want a bigger device, then get the 10S Max. Okay, whichever size storage you want, go for it. 
Personally, I don't think the Max should have come in a 64 gig variant. I don't think any phone over a thousand pounds should only have 64 gigs of built-in storage. I think they should have started the base at 128 gigs. But having said that, when I checked Apple's website this morning, I woke up late, unfortunately, so I'm gonna, my pre-order is gonna be a little bit delayed. The 64 gig variant has longer waiting time and the 512 gigabyte variant has a longer waiting time if you try and pre-order now in the UK than the 256 gig version. So what does that mean? It means a lot of people have gone for the 64 and the 512, but they haven't gone, not as many people have gone for the 256 gig, which I find strange, but maybe you guys out there can tell me why you think that is, I don't know. So maybe I'm wrong, the 64 gig was a good move. Cloud storage, not everyone needs huge storage. And that's just me being honest. I do, but doesn't mean you do. Think about that. Let me talk about the 10R for a minute. Let me, let me talk about the 10R. Okay. I think that is a very clever move by Apple. Why? Look at when you can pre-order it. October, meaning you'll get it in November. So what are a lot of the teenagers gonna be asking their mums and dads for, for Christmas? Can we have an iPhone? A lot of the youngsters nowadays, they like iPhones because their friends have got them. All the idols they watch in sports, singers, whatever, they all got iPhones. They all got Beats headphones. So what are the kids gonna be asking for? An iPhone. What's mum and dad gonna do? Hell no, we're not giving you a $1,500 iPhone but we will get you the 10R and they're all in six different colors. Now that's who that phone is aimed at. The fact it's a lower resolution screen and LCD is not gonna put these kids off because like I said, the average consumer doesn't have a clue about that stuff. They don't care. <coughs> they genuinely don't care. They like the iMessenger, they like their FaceTime. That's what they like and they like that brand name of Apple. So that, I think, will be the biggest selling iPhone is that one. You'll see it, it'll rock it in sales, I think. And also, what has Apple done? The iPhone 8, 8 Plus, 7, 7 Plus, they've dropped the prices right down on those. So if you don't want the face unlock, face ID, you could still get the touch ID, but for a much cheaper price. We're talking, what, I think it was 599? for the iPhone 8 Plus, another clever move by Apple. Because you know, they're gonna support that phone for at least four to five more years with software updates. And the iPhone 7s, they're gonna support that for at least four years with major updates. It's a kind of a, I keep saying clever move. It is a clever move by Apple. I'm not their biggest fans, but it's a clever move by Apple. And no one's talking about that so much, those lower costing devices. That to me is gonna mess up a lot of Android mid-range mid device manufacturers. Why? Be honest, be honest. You watching my video probably know about tech, know about phones, but a majority of the world doesn't. What a majority of the world knows about is brand names. They know about Apple, they know about Samsung. Recently in Europe, they're starting to hear more about Huawei, OnePlus, but they're still not household names like Apple and Samsung. So what do they ask for? What do they want? They want an Apple or they want a Samsung. Makes sense, right? So. When these kids are being asked by their parents, what phone do you want for Christmas or your birthday or your graduation or whatever, they're not gonna turn around and say, can I have the latest Oppo? Can I have the latest HTC? Can I have the latest LG? What are they gonna ask for? I want an iPhone. And guess what? It's affordable for them now. Absolutely affordable. And that's gonna rock. I'm gonna make a lot of problems for the mid-range Android device manufacturers. And I said this, if Apple released lower tier costing iPhones, it's gonna cause problems for Android and they've done it. 
And watch, mark my words, you'll see, it'll, they will sell the most. Anyway, that's enough ranting. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I tried not to make this too ranty. It's not rant. It's not me supporting Apple by any means. I'm not a fan of Apple's, but I'm being fair about it and I'm being unbiased. And a lot of Apple fans, like Samsung fans, they don't care about the price. At, you know, the price point. They kind of expected that price point. So there's no shocks in store, in store for them. What do you guys think of these things, this right behind me? Are you gonna be getting one of the new iPhones? If so, which one are you considering? What do you think about the pricing? Do not leave rude comments below because I will block them or delete them. Don't get all antsy and start cussing each other going, you're an iSheep or you're an Android, whatever, blah, blah. I don't care. We're not kids, we're adults. These are only phones. Don't get excited. I'm still a Samsung. Number one for me is Samsung and Huawei. They're my favorite two brands. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I try to put a different spin on this to the way other YouTubes are talking about these devices. What do you think? Anyway, until next time, take care. This is Texas saying peace.